Hey everyone, welcome back. I am several years late to the party, but for this video, I'm going to be reading Candace Owens' Blackout. I'm happy to report that this book is still very relevant. I'm about 100 pages in, and I got to learn about Candace's background despite this not even being a memoir. Her first media appearance was back in high school when she was the victim of a hate crime. After Candace started dating, her boyfriend, her male friend resented the fact that they weren't spending as much time together. You know, typical high school drama. But then one night, while drunk with friends, including the mayor's son, this guy leaves a voicemail for Candace calling her slurs and threatening to kill her the way that MLK Jr. was killed. Big yikes. Candace played it for her teacher and her guidance counselor called the police who involved the FBI because this was classified as a hate crime. And Candace's takeaways from this experience was that the media cared more about the outrage they could stir up rather than the person behind the incident. She also has a very generous take on the person behind the voicemail, saying her friend, ex-friend, wasn't racist. He was just very hurt and wanted to say what he thought would hurt her the most. I would say that I imagine the entire thesis of this book is going to revolve around Candace not wanting herself and other people to see themselves as victims because when you're a victim, you can't be a victor. So let's dive into the philosophy of the book. So, in one of the first sections of the book, Candace talks about family. Larry Elder once told Dave Rubin that in order for black people and people in general to be successful, children need to be raised by their mothers and fathers. There was a period of time before the New Deal that black people had a higher rate of nuclear families than white people did. Segregation and Jim Crow couldn't even break up the black family. But then the New Deal and LBJ came along with his infamous quote that he will have gamer words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. LBJ may have passed the Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Act, but besides the fact that those two things didn't really do much to change things, he also passed legislation that pretty outwardly hurt black people. The Great Society program married black people to welfare. Struggling families were ineligible for welfare benefits if an able-bodied man was living in the household, and that effectively encouraged black women to raise children alone and choose less suitable partners to be parents. And no, the solution is not eugenics, Planned Parenthood. Candace points out that 80% of Planned Parenthood clinics are within walking distance of black and Hispanic neighborhoods. Eugenics. Every year, black people make up 40% of all abortions despite only being 13% of the population. Eugenics. Candace says the demand for abortion itself reveals an understanding that even at the point of conception, the fetus is a living thing that will grow as only living things can do. And there you go, Candace just ended the debate. Also, crazy to think about how big work convinced generations that staying home with children and not having to work was oppression. Like how did the boomers get sucked into, hey you guys, why would you raise your kids when you can come and be a wage slave at a dentist office? For the first time in history, in like the mid 20th century, people could work their way to the middle class so someone could stay home with children. But no, no, that's oppression. Now both partners have the opportunity to work in order to live in an, in an apartment and pay someone to watch their infant. And that's basically Candace's extremely accurate take on modern feminism. So racism exists. And it's alive and well in the liberal sphere where they straight up admit they are racist and are trying to become anti-racist. The woman at my college who was the head of the DEI department literally told me she was consciously working on not crossing the street when a black person was walking towards her. And they just, liberals just think this is normal behavior. Like I had to explain to her that I have never crossed the street while a black person is walking towards me. And they just cope by pretending all white people are racist. The Democrat party has truly not changed since Andrew Jackson. They've just gotten a little less lynchy and a bit more condescending. 
Also, instead of lynching, they just encourage black women to abort their babies and black men to kill each other by absolving the black man's own culpability. 75% of black on black murders go unsolved. And I could talk about this for literal hours, but my MacBook could not handle such a long video. So let's move on. So here's a really, really good Candace quote I'm gonna read to you. Okay, ready? The personality complex of a liberal savior is one that fascinates me, as I believe it to be centered around extreme narcissism. I imagine them to be addicted to the feeling of accomplishment that is derived from helping someone inferior to them. Candace is so real. Okay. Candace is so real. Like, this also applies to male feminists. Like, shut up! I don't need you speaking for me about how scary it is to walk at night. Like, men should be scared to walk at night too, for different reasons. Oh, but then they're all silent when it comes to men dressed as women taking the joy out of competitive sports. Like, thank you, men! Candace points out that it will be scary for people to come to terms with the fact that if they reject the Democrat party, they are fully responsible for their own actions and failures. There's an allure to claiming to be a victim, and even I feel it. It's the new flex. It's the new purity test. The less white, straight, and male you are, the more pure you are. The fact of the matter is, bragging about how poor you were growing up or how you were the only non-white person on the soccer team is now the equivalent of bragging about your family's beach house. Like bragging and making a show about things that are out of your control is just cringe. I just wanted to apologize for my voice in this next clip. I was pretty sick while filming because, and you may be thinking like, Hannah, you're sick all the time. I know, because every weekend I go down to the Metro Mover, rub my grubby little hands all over the rails, and then stick them in my mouth. And I'm not going to change that behavior, so. I'm back. Let's keep chatting about the book. <coughs> Sorry for the noise, they're changing the, <coughs> the carpet in the hallway and my dog is barking, one second. Okay, so Candace brings up AOC and her mission for perceived goodness over truth in that she's a socialist and, you know, socialism has literally never done a single good thing ever. But I have to disagree with her on this one. I don't think AOC has any kind of creed or opinion on anything. We're talking about the woman who pretended to be arrested by holding her hands behind her back while walking next to a police officer on Capitol grounds. I sincerely, like not even joking, do not think she is capable of going to the bank to open a campaign account, never mind running for office and being a congresswoman. She is a face for corporations, ironically enough. AOC is not a real person. She is a useful sub 100 IQ idiot. And speaking of low IQ, we get another snippet of LBJ talking, and this time he doesn't use a slur. After passing the Civil Rights Act, the president explains how freedom for every American is so important and good point. But of course, a Democrat can't make a statement about black people without being condescending. Otherwise, they would start twitching. Don't be ableist. Let the white liberal be racist. LBJ says that in order for black people to achieve as much as white people do, they need a little help from the government. Thus beginning the fallback argument for black people who do not succeed. They're oppressed and need government assistance. Candace makes a good point about what black people have achieved through hard work in America. They dominate sports and music. Look at virtually every basketball and football player. Look at Kanye, Jay-Z, Beyonce. No one told LeBron that each basket he makes is worth four points because he's oppressed. Although I suspect he would like that. These people were not given any kind of assistance or extra attention because of the color of their skin. So this calls into question industries of which success relies on education. It's no secret that black children fall behind every ethnic group in school. Public schools are in part to blame for this because of curriculum. You have critical race theory taught in schools now, which is literally, which literally confirms white power and white supremacy. It tells children they will never accomplish anything so long as the white man is their boss at a job. And this is what I'm was talking about in my last video about the book you always come back by stating white people are a threat that can only be overcome by white people choosing to step aside is like racist that is a racist white supremacist confirming statement 
black people don't need white people's permission to succeed. Most white liberals who say this kind of nonsense aren't trying to be racist, but it's really racist and they need to stop. Liberals are also fighting to refuse to give black people the option of school choice. Like many parts of the country have implemented vouchers for underserved students to attend charter, private, and county schools where the education may be a lot better. But ultimately the liberals in power want black people to fail. And you know, obviously like that sounds like oppression, but like this is what they're voting for. Liberals want women to fail. They want white men to fail. They only want the elite to succeed. Candace also cites her own experience here. When she was in grade school, she was very studious and was actually recommended to skip a grade. Then when she got to middle school, that's when they started dividing up the classrooms by standardized test score, and she found herself mainly among white students. The other black girls at school in the lower level classes would make fun of her for being studious and not knowing hip hop slang and speaking like a white person. Like using proper English is not speaking like a white person. And it wasn't, it wasn't the white people ostracizing her. It was her fellow black students. If she wanted to be accepted by them, she would have to stop caring about school. The education system in black communities as well, as well as the lack of strong parental figures doesn't hold children to a very high academic standard. Black children are associating education and proper English with whiteness. Never mind how you know them thinking being white is a bad thing, but this is a problem. And I am going to continue reading and I'll get back to you with one last update. I'm back, and this next section that I just read is about the media. Very interesting how the media that we are supposed to have faith in vilified Trump for drinking Diet Coke multiple times a day, but refused to berate Barack Obama for smoking cigarettes. I just thought that was a little interesting section. Like, I don't really care about what either of them do, but that's a good point about the hypocrisy. Moving on, we are now back to LBJ, and let's do a fill in the blank. All right, you guys ready? The president called the civil rights bill what? It's a noun, a contentious one. LBJ also supposedly dropped the black poverty rate by 26%, and this is kind of what got him hailed as a hero of civil rights, but he did so by handing out money as well as changing the metrics for poverty by including non-money assistance like Medicaid and food stamps in the consideration. Just another of many examples of liberals redefining words and concepts to suit their needs. And what is a better example of media manipulation than Black Lives Matter? the money laundering organization founded on a lie. In 2015, statistics showed that a police officer was 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black man than an unarmed black man was to be killed by a police officer. So-called journalists should be arrested for convincing Americans that there's an epidemic of violence against black people by the police. Like this idea that black women need to have the talk with their children about, you know, oh, well, when you go out and commit a crime, make sure your hands are where everyone can see them. Like outrageous. In 2016, black people had a better chance of being struck by lightning than being killed by a police officer. In 2018, 2,925 black people were murdered and 2,600 of their murderers were black none of the 234 white murderers were cops. A study by Michigan State University that didn't really need to be done found that if you live in a county where a lot of white people commit crimes, white people are more likely to be shot by cops. And the same logic applied to black communities that they studied. The study also noted that black people are far more likely to be shot by black officers because people generally represent the places that they grew up in when they become cops. Who's gonna help these poor black people that are in constant danger? Hopefully someone offers a solution. In a wonderful little section, Candace mentions Dr. Ben Carson, my president. It's honestly vile that my college professors would force me to call them doctor for getting a PhD in political science when someone like Dr. Ben Carson exists. He grew up in poverty to a mother who could not read and she fostered the importance of self-reliance and accountability 
forcing him to stay home and write book reports as a child instead of hanging out on the streets doing who knows what. He ended up becoming the first neurosurgeon to successfully separate conjoined twins at the brain and was Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under Trump. Incredible man. Yet, a large portion of the black community resents him because he held himself accountable for his own actions. Candace also points out how accountability to God is a hindrance to the Democrat Party. Modern Democrats want to implement communism through socialism in America, and history has shown us that communism really only works when people are forced to be atheists. The black church is a pillar of American culture solidified after the Civil War as an immovable institution of faith, family, and love. but. It's now deteriorating alongside the Christian faith of other Americans. The Democrat Party wants to replace Christian faith with faith in government and faith in purported moral goodness. Moral goodness is a dubious thing because Klansmen thought that they were the moral good. And Democrats also think that black people are stupid. Like, consider Hillary Clinton's appearance on a black podcast when she declared that she keeps hot sauce in her purse. That was a ripoff from the Beyonce song, Formation. The podcast host pointed out to Hillary that people were going to perceive her answer as pandering. To which Hillary said, is it working? Then this is the woman who referred to black men as super predators. And then there's the infamous example of Joe Biden on Charlemagne the God's podcast. Never mind Joe Biden saying at one point that he didn't want his children growing up in a racial jungle and co-authoring the 1994 crime bill that lengthened prison sentences and disproportionately affected black men. But you know, Joe went on this podcast and told Charlemagne that if his audience is having a hard time figuring out who to vote for, then they ain't black. And Joe Biden has never used the word ain't before Candace points out. Candace knows the Democrats don't respect black people and like to make fun of them, really, but she actually also calls into question whether or not black people command respect. It's Candace's perception that the black community is undereducated and overinvested in culture to the point that if you're not acting as part of a monolith, you're a race traitor. Candace, despite being wildly successful and competent, is considered not black by a lot of black people and white liberals, of course. There's this element of groupthink that becomes dangerous. Look at the George Floyd riots. Cities were burnt down, black businesses destroyed, and 14 black men killed by other black men in the name of a career criminal who committed a crime and then died of an overdose. The media hid the rest of the video for almost a year, and the courts wouldn't let the jury see the full autopsy. Celebrities bailed out violent rioters, and people like myself were ostracized for not posting a black square on Instagram in solidarity. Being a liberal at college during this time was truly hell. And of course, worst of all, we had to hear from Al Sharpton again. Candace was particularly disturbed by the death of David Dorn, a 77-year-old retired cop and security guard for a store during the riots. He was shot and killed by a 24-year-old black man who was robbing it, and there were no statues built for David. After this, Candace did some research and found out that in 2019, just the year before, white men were 25% more likely to be killed by police than black men. So all of that death and violence was for nothing. So now we're on to the final chapter before the conclusion. Candace brings up the goofiest man in the NFL, Colin Kaepernick. This guy isn't even infuriating because everything he says is so silly. He pretends to be this Malcolm X figure. Meanwhile, he's pretty white. Like, race is not a binary, unlike gender. And he is probably more white than he is black. Anyways, she mentions a few of Colin's greatest hits, one being how he apologizes to Iran for sanctions America imposed on them, saying that the US has always attacked brown and black people through imperialism. He seems to not be aware that Iran existed long before America. And back when it was Persia, it was imperialist for over 200 years. Iranians don't care about America. We are a blip of their long history. My personal favorite colonism is Thanksgiving 2019, when he had an un-Thanksgiving with some tribe. Like imagine how much money he had to throw at these people to let him on the reservation. So just so he could tweet, the US government has stolen billions of acres of land. Like it's called conquering. 
and usually the conquerors straight up murder all of their opponents. So the US was actually quite generous with the natives. There's also this uncomfy truth that the natives had slaves. Candace brings up the Aztecs and the absolute hell that the Spanish walked into. They cannibalized and sacrificed people to demons regularly. One of the points of this book is that white men are not the sole inflictors of evil. Like, they're not so brilliant and better than everyone else that they are the only ones capable of immense cruelty. Like, someone sold the slaves. In fact, slavery today is only practiced in non-white countries. Moral of the story, Democrats hate freedom. Freedom means being able to vote and live without punishment. Candace Owens outed herself as a conservative and has been punished for it ever since. She is a pariah in the media, constantly slandered and lied about, all because she stepped off of the Democrat plantation. They've pegged Dr. Ben Carson, a literal neurosurgeon, as stupid. Black conservatives are terrorized by these Klansmen. Candace refers to the severing of limbs of runaway slaves and calls today's version this modern media smearing as a figurative dismembering. Instead of white sheets, they now wear black Antifa masks. In conclusion, this is a very well-researched book. Candace makes some great points in under 300 pages. You could read this in a couple of days, so I would highly recommend it. What really resonated with me was that Candace's point about Democrats and liberals loving to view the world through the lens of a Disney movie where everything is black and white binary of good and bad. The Republican Party, and, the, and you know, that's just not reality. The Republican Party before Trump had fallen into this neocon trap of loving war and imperialism alongside the Democrats. Trump really is our first anti-war candidate in a really long time. To suggest that it's Trump Republicans versus Democrats for like, you know, the future of our country sounds like it lacks nuance, but in reality, the Democrat Party's conception, since their conception, they have been evil racist that only look out for their own elite. They are okay with the destruction of America if it means that their elite can profit from it. The Democrat Party is a terrorist organization that really hasn't done anything positive and they need to be destroyed ultimately. And I know that sounds so reductive, but that's just the truth. They are a cancer to this country and they're openly indoctrinating and mutilating children and calling you the bigot. Like they've gone way too far. They've always claimed moral goodness when at some point they thought the KKK was moral good. So we can't govern our society based on perceived goodness. And they just can't be tolerated anymore. I'm not saying I know what the solution is, but it, part of it is definitely not voting Democrat. Like don't vote for the party of slavery, Jim Crow and segregation. And now, you know, terroristic Antifa who's terrorizing black people. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite Kamala Harris quote is. She is my favorite black queen.